A consequence of the mimetic theory I have never talked about really, which is, which is very important, is that the anthropology of the gift and counter gift, which I think is pure nonsense, you know, and uh, modern, um, what should I say, we are all men of goodwill, so we want to exchange. No, anthropology is anthropology of avoidance. Yeah. You avoid your sisters because the first tendency must be to fight over them. Yes. Therefore, you go far away yes. to get a, someone you're, who means nothing to you and nothing to your brother and so forth. Therefore, he is uh, uh, not connected with previous fighting or anything of the sort. And you should uh, understand that all exchange, I think that when all exchange is interpreted as the real motivation being avoidance, mm. it makes much more sense than uh, just, uh, you know, goody... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so you, you definitely it, think that um, ideological prevention, not mm -hmm. to use the word prejudice, uh, has played a very considerable role Yes, uh, among uh, ethnologists, anthropologists, sure. in the interpretation sure. of human origin. Why does man always go far away in order to get what he could get immediately close to him? Yes. You know, but he always goes in the distance to something unknown. Yes, and finally he makes arrangements with the people in the distance because they have the same need. But they are symmetrical and not really. They are for the same reasons, but with different people. Therefore, we can have an agreement with distant people simply because we cannot have agreement with the people close to us. Mm -hmm. That the, the people with whom we fight mm -hmm. are the people close to us, mm -hmm. you know. But we can have an alliance if there is an enemy in more distance. Yeah. And does this, does this apply to the burial of corpses as well? Yes, because I, I saw that when, uh, you know, the, 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 the language of exchange is used to... There are certain people who exchange even corpses. Mm. So exchange corpses. Mm. Why should you want to have the corpse of the other fellow from the next tribe? No. But if you do bury them, you're like a professional undertaker who doesn't know anything about the buried and is not going to cry and uh, who can proceed as if he didn't know anything. Archaic tribes know how to do that yeah. by just exchanging the corpses. And you, I, mm, yeah. I can say the burial goes quite far back in the hominids, doesn't it? I don't know whether it goes back to Lucy, goes but Neanderthals really. and... Yeah. Didn't Neanderthals bury their... They, they bury. Yes, they, they, bury they are the first to bury. Yes. I think we think we have proof of that, but mm. these proofs are always a little, you know... Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, your theory explains the genesis of what is most characteristically human and cultural as opposed to natural, which is the power of symbolicity, of seeing things, in, in, of managing the world through signs, um, not simply in terms of facts, events yes. and things. You mean because you compare? Yes. And you, yeah, yes. So um, you, you, you have an account in, um, in Things Hidden about how the victim is the centre of signification and, uh, and meaning, as it were, radiates out yes, from right. that. Because the victim is uh, the author of some uh, guilty deed, mm -hmm. but the punishment of that victim saves everybody mm. because it reconciles the group. Therefore, the divinization is a normal phenomenon. The victim becomes the center of the the point of departure of thinking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of thinking about these problems. Have you ever read any other uh, thinker or writer on the process of hominization, 
who appears to you to have made equal sense of the jigsaw puzzle that it is, or who um, does a better job of um, uh, explaining the paradoxes and the contradictions um, yeah. and the suddenness of yeah. it and the... If I had, I would have adopted his theory. <laughs> theory you would, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah.